All right, so this is a video on just calculating speed and calculating velocity. Um, I wanted to just give a couple practice problems with some graphing and some data tables just to give you a little bit of extra practice. We're going to start with uh, number one right here. This will be number two for later. Um, so a number of questions could be asked. You could be asked to find the average speed of this whole trip. Let's say this is, you know, data table one and data table two are my drive to school and how long I had to drive and how long it took me and all of that. Um, so we could ask the average speed. We could even look for the slowest or the fastest speed that I went in there. Um, that will be calculated through, you know, looking at some of these time intervals. And you could also be asked to make a graph. Um, so let's start with number one. To calculate average speed, and we're moving the whole thing there, sorry about that. If we're asked to calculate average speed, we know that that is total distance over total time, right? So how do we figure out the total distance? Well, right here, we've got distance being 100. We do not add up each of these individual points because those aren't total distances that I traveled. That means that at zero minutes, I had gone zero kilometers. After five minutes, I traveled 20. Five minutes later, I traveled another three kilometers to put my total up to 23. So by the time we're done with the data, at 25 minutes, I've traveled 100 kilometers. Now, this works out really well because the starting distance and the starting time are both zero. So really, to figure out this here, number one, we would say the average speed is going to be the total distance of 100 over 25. And remember, we want to include units, so that's kilometers over minutes. Now, we have to think about how that would change if this were anything but zero. So we'll keep that in mind for number two. I would suggest even doing it another way where we say 100 minus zero over 25 minus zero. Just to keep in mind that you're trying to find the total, which means you also look, need to look at your initial. So either way that you do the math, either this way or this way, you're going to end up with, what are we going to end up with? Four kilometers per minute, OK? That will be your answer for number one. Now, for slowest speed, we're now looking at number two here. Basically, what we're looking for is, I'm going to erase some of this scribbling over here so we can see things a little better. Um, we're looking at where did I travel the slowest. So we want to be, what's nice is I made these time intervals all go up by five. So we know that each increment in your distances is a change in five minutes. So here, we traveled a total of 20 kilometers in five minutes. That's pretty quickly. Here, we only did three. Here, we did seven. Here, we did 10. And here, we did a total of 60. So right in that 20 there to keep it consistent. Um, where was this distance the slowest? And we see that right here. So the answer to the slowest speed, that's not just going to be one time. We could say it would be found from minute 5 to minute 10, right? And we could say that the slowest speed is therefore going to be three kilometers over five minutes. And you could just leave that as a fraction because you won't have your calculator. That's fine with me. Um, <clears throat> now, to take a look at, I'm going to erase this stuff over here. All right, to take a look at number three here, we are now looking at the fastest speed. When did we travel the fastest speed, and what was our fastest speed? So instead of looking for the smallest jump, we're looking for the biggest jump. And we see that down here. So we see that I drove the fastest, drove fastest from minute 20 to 25. And the reason we have to include an interval is because I don't know what happened between minute 20 and 25. I might have driven most of that during the first three minutes and then slowed down for the last two. But the data doesn't tell that. All we know is that from 20 to 25 minutes, that was when I drove the fastest. Now, what was that fastest speed? We can take 60 
kilometers and divide that by five minutes. <clears throat> so that would be a total of 12 kilometers per minute would be my fastest speed, number three. Okay, so I'm going to erase all of this again. Now for graphing, we of course want to have our x and our y axis. Time will always be down here because time is constant. Time keeps on ticking every second all the time. We're never going to change time in any way. A second will always be a second. Um, but distance, that's what we're actually measuring. We're trying to see how far we get in that certain time interval. Um, so if you were asked to graph, you'd want time, you'd want to say the units, which would be minutes, you want to say distance in the units, which would be kilometers, and you want to come up with some kind of title that is descriptive. So we could say, you know, Mr. Kalman's speed on his drive to school. Um, at that point, then, you can then just start to uh, put this data into the data graph. So 0 and 0, you know, you'd be starting over here, you know, uh, 5, you know, let's do this in blocks of 5 here, right? 5, you go up by 5, you know, 520 is going to be right here, and okay. So there we go. Um, graphing it, you guys all know how to do that, but this is the general format that you want with your title up here and your label as well as your units on both sides. Um, so that is problem set number one. Um, that's the easier one. So problem set number two, I'm not going to do entirely for you because I just showed you how to do this last one. Um, the things that you want to think about, we're going to erase all this stuff, is that in problem set number two, our time and our distances, the first ones that we have, are starting at minute eight and distance of six kilometers. That does not mean that my drive, I had already been driving eight minutes. That just means that the first data point that you have is eight minutes and six kilometers. So when you're asked to calculate the average speed and you're trying to look at the total distance, the, remember, total distance over total time, that's going to equal final distance minus initial distance over final time over initial time. When you're looking, so that would cross that one off, if you're looking for slowest speed, you're going to look and see where the smallest little change here was made. You know, was it here when it was 10? Was it, was it here when it was 12? Was it here when it was 3? For fastest speed, you're going to look for where was that biggest jump, which I think, you know, might be down here in the second half. And graphing, make sure that you have all of those labels and units and the, the graph title, just like we talked about before. Hope this helped. Feel free to shoot me an email if you've got any questions.